Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, the co-founder, executive vice president of the nonprofit uh, CLL Society. Uh, Dr. Eichhorst, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes, thank you very much for the kind invitation. My name is Barbara Eichhorst. I'm a hematologist and I'm working at the University Hospital in Cologne in Germany. And I'm also chair, chair of the German Student Study Group. Well, the German CLL study group um, has led some very significant studies, large collaborative studies in CLL. And one of them we're gonna talk about today is a follow-up of four years data on the use of venetoclax in uh, treatment naive patients. This is the CLL 13 study, but maybe you could provide a little bit of background why, why this was an important study and what the recent data that you presented back at ASH um, uh, suggested in how that's important for patients. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Dr. Kaufmann. So um, maybe um, as patients are aware, we have when we treat CLL, the possibility either to use continuous treatment with this type of drugs called BTK inhibitors, and among them, the first one was abrutinib um, taken as a continuous drug and leading to a very rapid and fast relief of the symptoms. On the other hand, we have the possibility to use another drug, another um, tablet, which is venetoclax, which is leading immediately to um, dying CLL cells. And this is combined in frontline with a, an antibody. And so an antibody which is targeting um, a protein on the surface of CLL cells. And the antibody is called obinituzumab. And it's a, quite a strong antibody. So we have learned already in the past that patients really develop side effects when it's given for the first time. However, we also have other antibodies well known as rituximab we use in all types of B-cell lymphoma for more than 20 years. And rituximab seems to be better tolerated. So the question we addressed with the trial was that we wanted to evaluate in fit patients um, where so far chemoimmunotherapy, at least in Europe, was still a good choice of treatment using either a combination of bendamustine, rituximab in elderly patients, BR regimen, or fludarabine cyclophosphamide rituximab. Um, in some patients, really very good working chemotherapy, but um, chemotherapy. And we compared that to the venetoclax um combination treatment, which is given for 12 cycles of treatment. And we had another arm where we combined this drug venetoclax with the other CD20 antibody, the rituximab, um, because rituximab is better tolerated. And so, so we wanted to know, do we really need this stronger antibody? And there was a fourth arm in the clinical trial where we added the abrutinib, which is usually given as continuous treatment, also for a limited amount of time for 15 cycles to um, the combination with venetoclax plus omnituzumab. So we had a triplet regimen, two tablets and additional eight infusions. And we wanted to know if we should use rather, particularly in patients who are of younger age and fit, um, if we should use triplet treatments. And what we presented um, at the, the ASH meeting was the four-year follow-up from that study, where we were able to compare all four treatment arms with respect to the time from initiation of treatment until patients either have again, progressive disease, so meaning their lymphocyte count was increasing again, or they had growing lymph nodes, or patients died, which was luckily very rarely the situation in patients. What we see is that um, the combination of venetoclax with a stronger antibody with omnituzumab is better uh, than chemotherapy, but also better with respect to disease control in comparison to the old and less strong antibody rituximab. So there were more side effects with this combination. And when we look at the triplet combination, we do not yet see that adding the third uh, medication, the abrutinib, 
is resulting in a really significantly longer time without relapse for the patients. But we have first signs that maybe when we look at the data again next year, we also see here a benefit. However, we see this addition of a, a third medication of the abrutinib is also resulting in some more side effects, particularly um, side effects affecting um, the heart and the blood pressure in patients. This, they, we have seen that more of these, um, what we call adverse events, are occurring in the triplet regimen. Well, one of the things that struck me in this paper is that this is, um, seeing that this started four years ago, that that the use of measurable uh, or minimal residual disease was part of the design of this. And you looked at it not only with flow cytometry, but with next generation sequencing. And you there were some findings that really piqued my interest there. I wonder if you could share your thoughts on, explain what you found and what your thoughts are on that and how that might fit into future treatments uh, outside of clinical trials. Yeah, so what, what we've seen, and we have seen similar results, but not with so good techniques, um, is that when we use this very highly sensitive technique, um, the next generation sequencing, where we can detect one CLL cells um, among uh, one million leukocytes, um, that when we when we use that method, that we see patients who are achieving that level of deep, very deep response, that they benefit much more than patients who are still have some residual um, cells. So this is, you would say, not so surprising. Of course, if there are leukemia cells or lymphoma cells left, the relapse will come earlier. But what is a bit surprising is when we looked at, in addition, the normal conventional response criteria, where we look at also patients, for example, in CT scans, if they had residual lymph nodes, yes or not. We have seen then that it's more important that the blood is really cleared completely from CLL cells, which is very sensitive technique, than when there was still a residual lymph node of maybe 1.5 centimeter or so, very small lymph nodes, or even when the spleen is still a little bit enlarged. I know many patients are are caring a lot about their spleen size, but it may not become normal um, for the rest of their life. And uh, the reason is that it's probably not so important that they have a normal spleen size. It's more important that you can really clear the CLL cells from the peripheral blood because um, then these cells might go back into lymph nodes where they then drive later on the relapse of the disease. And I've argued, and it sounds like this may be now a correct argument, that it is more important to reach undetectable measurable residual disease than to re reach a complete remission, which is where your spleen is back to normal, your nodes are back to normal, your counts are back to normal. And it looks like patients with partial remissions with slightly enlarged nodes are, but undetectable MRD are doing better than perhaps those even a complete remission, but do have significant uh, disease burden or at least a small amount of disease burden in their blood still. Is that is that a correct understanding? Yeah, that's a, that's a correct understanding. So um, it's, of course, an, in implementing the question, should we measure this MRD in patients also outside clinical trials, um, um, which is, I think, a matter of debate because um, the, the question is always, is there a consequence when we for example, measure MID at the end of the treatment, then we would have the situation, the patient is probably worried that he still has residual disease, but the question is what should, how would be the best way to proceed now? Should we continue the treatment? Should we change um, to a different agent? Should we use an antibody, for example, as a kind of consolidation therapy? What do you do in other lymphoma? So the question is open, what should we do at the end of the treatment? On the other hand, we know if we do this MID testing and we cannot detect CLL anymore, this is really excellent news for the patients. One last question on this. This is, you mentioned in the blood, are you also testing in the bone marrow at all in this trial? We did test in the bone marrow um, for those patients who had otherwise normal lymph nodes, and we have seen that there is some discrepancy that patients may have non-detectable non CLLs in the peripheral blood, but still in the bone marrow. But 
these are rarer cases. So um, we know that um, the peripheral blood is correlating, particularly when we use the sensitive next generation sequencing very well with um, the bone marrow results. Um, therefore, um, I think in the future we won't need any of that's a least to try to get away from the bone marrow biopsy. Right now it's still necessary in clinical trials. Well, patients will certainly like that news. Any, I any, can't any final thoughts or uh, comments on this for, uh, to help patients and their care partners understand? Um, yeah, I think it's what is important is to discuss with respect to the choice of treatment uh, with the physician, the general direction you would like to go if you would like to use continuous treatment or time limited treatment. Um, I'm, of course, biased because these were our own studies, but just what we haven't published and I wouldn't to tell patients is that, that we also looked at quality of life and we saw that um, with the time limited treatment, more than with the chemotherapy, the quality of life, the global quality of life is really improving once patients stop on the treatment. And therefore, I think that's also it's uh, also a very important message for the patients that, of course, this time limited treatment could be quality, better quality of life after the end of treatment could be another aspect for deciding for that treatment. Doctor, Dr. Eichhorst, I am so grateful for what you and your colleagues in Cologne and the rest of Germany and the European Union are doing to help uh, CLL patients. Uh, you really push the boundaries and you haven't stopped. You keep doing more and more research as a patient and as a patient advocate. I am so grateful for what you're doing. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me here.